Hey, this is Jana. I want to welcome you to this first episode of our new Mitten Knit Along in the Sloth series, where we're going to go super slow and answer all your questions so you can get all the help you need. And we're going to knit a pair of mittens together. So first, let me say the pattern that's linked below is the world's simplest mitten pattern by Tin Ken Knits. It's written, it's very straightforward. It's written pretty clearly. I'll go through it with you step by step. And for those of you that want a little bit of a challenge, we're gonna put a snowflake pattern on the back of the mitten. So you do a little stranded color work. Now, if you're a beginner knitter or you just don't wanna do color work, that's totally fine. I'll make it clear how to just, where to insert the color work instructions and then make it clear how we're just gonna straight up follow the pattern for those of you that just wanna knit the basic mitten. So don't be intimidated by that at all. It's totally optional. You definitely don't have to do the color work to knit along with me. That's totally fine. So I'll, I'll make that delineation clear as we go along. All right, so let's look at the pattern together. Um, if you start and look at the top, there's some, you know, it, it tells you the sizing right away. It tells you the materials that you're gonna need. Now you'll notice that if you're looking at the pattern with me, she has listed um, four different gauges or sizes of yarn. And so she's written the pattern so you can knit it with fingering, DK, worsted, or bulky or chunky weight yarn. Okay, so and then she's got the numbers, the yardages, and all that worked out for each of those sizes. Now let me just say there are some variations with that. So for example, I have some DK weight or sport weight. Sport and DK is super close. So what I'm using for my part of my mitten is the this skein of Woolies sport weight. And I have that in two different colors, as you'll see. And so I'm following the pattern for the DK instructions, which is um, the largest size. However, what I discovered when I knitted the first sample mitten is that even though I am knitting the largest size of the DK numbers, so I cast on 48, I kind of wished I would have cast on 52 because it's because I'm doing the color work that adds some yarn around the middle of the hand. So I'm knitting it for my kids, so it's okay. It's a little tight on me, but I also have pretty big hands, but it's just right for my kids, for my older daughter who's 15. So. If you're gonna, the only reason I bring this up is that if you're gonna do the stranded color work with me, be in my, be mindful that when we begin the color work on the portion of the hand that we knit the snowflake, it adds some thickness. So you may want to cast on a size up from what you normally would if you're gonna do the color work with me. If you're just gonna knit it straight up plain, then just follow exactly what she says as far as gauge, needle size, and all that. Okay, so she suggests two different needle sizes. I'm using a size US size three and five because you cast on and knit the ribbing at the cuff at the bottom with the smaller size needle and then you switch to the larger size needle when you begin the hand portion. So be mindful of that. Okay, and we're gonna start off by using the long tail cast on and doing the one by one ribbing for the cuff. All right, let's get to it. I'm using the long tail cast on if you need some step-by-step -step instructions on how to accomplish that, just click the little I with the circle in the upper right-hand corner of this video, and that'll take you to the step-by-step -step version I have of that. But I've just simply started with a, a slip knot on my left, or sorry, my right needle here, and I'm gonna cast on 48 for the size that I've chosen. And I talked about that a moment ago. All right, so we're just gonna cast on our 48, that's, the pattern, or sorry, the size that I'm doing, you cast on however many is designated for the size that you've chosen. I've cast on 48 stitches here, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna count over to the midpoint, so after 24, and I'm gonna separate, um, I'm using the magic loop method, and I have a link to that down below or in the little right, the little uh, eye with the circle in the upper right hand corner, but I'm just gonna count over 24, so there's 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And then I'm just going to gently bend my needle so that I can have half on each side. Um, and I go ahead and pull this front cable through, and I'll show you why in just a moment. The way that I like to attack, now there's many ways to join in the round. Um, I just keep it super simple. This is the tail. I just lay that over the or other needle and I curl my magic loop around and I like to come into this first stitch as if to purl. So let me show you that. Let's see if I can get that to focus a little better for you. Let me show you that and I take my tail, 
that I was had laid over, and I just wrap it kind of from left to right and lay it over there. And then I use my needle to kind of, as you would to purl, and I just use my needle to draw that through the bottom of that stitch, that's all. And then I, you know what, I just tie, I just tie a knot. I just tie a square knot in here because this is a mitten and particularly if you're knitting things for kids, you want it to be durable, you want it to withstand trips through the washing machine and so forth. So I just tie a little knot and get that in there and they're pretty snugly. Yeah, and are there more elegant ways to do this? Yeah, absolutely there is, but I'm just gonna get it, get her done. I'm just kind of a practical, get it done kind of a gal. Okay, so now I have my working yarn coming off the bottom here of the cable. Actually, it's coming off that knot I just made, but normally when you're magic looping, it would be coming off where we pulled the cable through. I'm just gonna go in and start doing my ribbing, which is knit one, purl one. And again, one by one ribbing is really not my favorite, um, but it is pretty stretchy. And the reason for that is you're taking the yarn from back to front after each stitch. And so that creates some elasticity because you're adding that tiny little bit of yarn and that does create a little more stretchiness in there. So we're just gonna go round and round doing this one by one ribbing for several inches actually. And so just refer to your pattern and make sure, I think for mine it's like four inches. Now you don't have to make the cuff that long if you don't want to, because um, like I always say, you're the boss of your knitting. Um, I kind of like the cuff a little longer because it keeps the snow out of, you know, in between the, the sleeve of your coat. And you know, if you're having a snowball fight, you might want that extra cuff on there to keep your wrists warm if you're building your snowman. Okay, so I'm just gonna go across here. And again, if you're new to Magic Loop and you're unsure um, how we're gonna transition from front to back in each half of the yarn that, you know, each half of the stitches that we're doing here, um, I'll show you how I turn my work and shuffle my needles around. And then you can also refer to that other video that I mentioned that's, um, joining in the round and using mag the magic loop technique. All right, so I've knitted across my first 24 here, and I always leave my yarn to the back. That's just habit. What I'm gonna do now is I have the most of the excess cable on the left. So before I turn anything or do anything, I don't wanna lose stitches off this needle, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. Whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through. Then I'm gonna turn my work around so my next needle is ready. And I'm going to shuffle my the needle that I wasn't using. I'm shuffling that in, and then I'm simply pulling the other one out. So my working yarn now is coming off the the stitches I just finished. So I just make sure that that's good and snug, so I don't have any ladders. And since I finished with a purl stitch, I'm going in as if to knit. And what is important here? Don't start knitting with your tail. <laughs> What is important here is that you give this a good tug so that you suck up the stitch that's on this cable and you end up not having a ladder between the cable and your needle here. You don't want to have any extra space going on there. So I go ahead and give that a little tug and I bring that to the front. And when you do your next stitch, which is the purl, give that, you know, give that a good little snug as well. And then just continue along. So we're gonna do this one by one ribbing for several inches. And again, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't like one by one and you choose to do the two by two ribbing, do that. As long as it's a multiple of four, it'll come, your stitch, your cast on stitches are a multiple of four, it'll come out just right. So I'll check back in with you after I get the cuff ribbing completed. All right, I've completed my four inches of one by one ribbing and you can see it's super stretchy. So that's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. It fits on there really well. It's a little bit snug, but that's okay. All right, so now the next part of the pattern says, let's see, where are we at? With small innovators cast on, we did that. Okay, this means place beginning of round marker and join into work for the round. So I forgot to mention this before, because um, I don't ever use, well, I shouldn't say ever. I rarely use a beginning of the round marker, which is what that B-O-R means. Uh, because I have my cast on tail, so that kind of shows me which side is the beginning of the round. So I know that it's this side, not that side. Now some people use double pointed or use a, a small circular needle that's like an eight or nine inch circular. And if you're doing that, then yeah, you might want to put a, a beginning of the round marker 
on there. Um, and just as a side note, B-O-R, most patterns, if you'll notice, they have a key or a legend that shows what all of the abbreviations are for. Um, I'm shuffling around here trying to find where that is. On her pattern, it's on the page three, actually, not in the beginning, it's at the bottom, at the back. So it shows all the abbreviations and what everything stands for there. Normally, it'll be in the beginning, but you know, you never know, authors, liberties, and all that. So BOR is beginning of the round, decrease, increase, knit, knit two, tog is knit two together, and so forth. We'll go through all that. And M1, make one by the preferred method. There are many methods for doing that. I will show you my preferred. Um, but again, you're the boss. So, okay, so after we complete the ribbing, the, I have to find the right page again. The pattern says, after we complete that, then we are going to switch to the larger needles, which I've done, and we're going to knit four rounds for DK and fingering. And for worsted and chunky, you'll knit three plain rounds. Okay, so see, you can see I've gone through and I've circled stuff and made notes on mine. So I'm just gonna straight up knit four rounds. All right, so I've knitted my four plain rows now after switching to the larger needles. And for this week, for the sloth tutorial, this is gonna complete session one. Now I don't wanna start the color work yet and the increasing on the thumb gussets because I don't want my sloth knitters to be overwhelmed. However, if you are just chomping at the bit and you can't stand it, I will go ahead and upload the color chart. You can play with that. You can mess around with that. I'm doing it at the same time I'm doing my thumb gusset increases. So if you're a more advanced knitter and you want to go forth, do it. All right, but I will undertake that with the rest of you next week.